My name is Clark Taylor, and in this video, I would like to introduce you to a paper that Jason Gross, my co-author, and I have written to introduce you to factor graphs. To begin, let's talk about why you might need a tutorial on factor graphs. From a marketing or non-technical perspective, factor graphs are exploding in popularity and use. In the robotics community, factor graphs have been widely accepted, essentially becoming the standard for performing visual nav and other indoor navigation tasks. In addition, the Institute of Navigation has held two smartphone decimeter challenges sponsored by Google, and both of these competitions have been won by a factor graph based technique. And the navigation community is seeing a dramatic increase in factor graph interest. For example, a paper comparing factor graphs and extended column filter, filters was one of the top cited articles in the navigation journal as shown by the picture on the screen. From a technical perspective, why is there so much interest in factor graphs? First, we need to understand that the factor graph is at core a batch technique. This means that for nonlinear systems, the factor graph is more accurate than a baseline common filter based system. Note that you can achieve the same accuracy with a backward smoothing common filter or a common filter that goes back in time to relinearize old transition mat measurement matrices. But this behavior, the batch behavior, is the baseline for factor graphs as opposed to a special type of common filter. Because the factor graph is a batch technique, it also provides other advantages such as the ability to evaluate measurements for outliers more effectively. The factor graph is also very extensible making what may be difficult in a common filter much easier in a factor graph. For example, consider these two factor graphs. The top factor graph is what we use to represent a backward smoothing extended common filter setup. We have measurements coming in at each time step, the Z boxes there, and dynamics, the green boxes that link these time steps together. By solving this whole factor graph, we are using a batch technique to, say, to solve the same problem as an extended common filter would solve. But what if rather than a single dynamics model, we want to combine an inertial sensor dynamics model and a vehicle model together? With a common filter, this can be difficult to do. Well, I can draw a factor graph like the one we have on the bottom of this slide, which in addition to having two dynamics models, also learns a weighting for which dynamics model I should trust more at each time step. This very complex estimation framework is very simple to implement with a factor graph. So in this paper, we will introduce you to factor graphs and how to use them to solve estimation problems. There are many computational tools that are associated with factor, factor graphs that make it a computationally reasonable approach, including some of the ones listed on this slide. Each of these are briefly introduced in our paper. We also compare the performance of a factor graph with an extended common filter for a relatively simple estimation problem, comparing both the estimation accuracy and the computational requirements. With the basics of a factor graph in hand, we then introduce some more complex estimation scenarios and how to solve these in a factor graph. We particularly focus on robust estimators, which are used to reject bad measurements in a factor graph, and on the capability of a factor graph to handle non-Gaussian probability density functions, including discrete probability distributions. Finally, we conclude with a brief review of how factor graphs are being used in the navigation community, including how to perform GNSS-based estimation using factor graphs. So we hope that this paper will help you to understand what factor graphs are and how they can be used to solve your navigation problems. We've also provided some code that implements the sample estimation problem discussed in the paper with both a factor graph and an extended column filter. We believe that as you start to use factor graphs, you will see it has great applicability to your navigation problems, and we hope this paper can help you get started on that journey.